Okay, so boys and girls, today we're going to be learning about Alexander Calder. And if you look here, right here, I just love this picture. I call him Alexander Calder, but is actually um, the name he liked to go by was Sandy. But you can see here with his pliers, and he's working there, um, bending his wire, just um, like the mobiles that we just saw in some of the videos that he made. But before he could go to the point of turning something into a mobile, he had to first kind of think in two dimension to think through what was the movement and what was the shapes that he wanted to have. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And if you look at some of his artwork, some of his artwork here you can see here, these were ones that he would call balloons. And so all of these have a movement kind of moving upward. Whereas if you look on this one, this one kind of has an all over movement. And these are just kind of going topsy-turvy. What you're going to be doing today is figuring out in your mind what kind of movement do you want to have in your artwork uh, inspired by Alexander Calder. And you can either make it kind of in the idea of it turning into a mobile or it just being something that um, kind of makes the paper, even though the paper is still, it gives the feeling of movement. So an example of that might be that I would take my um, oil pastel and I would take my um, idea and kind of think, okay, I think I want to have a swirling, almost thinking back to the circus idea, but maybe more like a roller coaster. So maybe I would have this swirling thing going around of like a roller coaster that would make you super nauseous if you were actually on there. Whoops. And if that happens to you, no big deal. You're just going to be putting all the little pieces in here so that you can use them. So I have this swirling. Maybe I could have someone that seems like they're coming off of the roller coaster. That would not be good. That was always my mother's fear that we would fall off the roller coasters and go out somewhere. Terrible. Um, here I could put another one over here, go on the other way. So now I have my lines. So that's as simple as that. This is what Alexander Calder would do just to kind of reflect movement. And then you can go ahead and take your... Um, your paintbrush and you can start to paint. So we can come here and pick up some color and I can come in here and fill in the spaces in between like so. Coming over here. You could even paint in between the spaces if you want to. If you want to come like this you can do that too. I'm actually just realizing I forgot my water well. Hang on one second. You need the water well so that um, you can rinse out your brush. So I'm rinsing out my brush here. And now I can take another primary color here and come over here. Maybe I could come in between here and make this kind of look like there's movement. So whatever makes you feel like there's movement going on in your paper, that's what I want for you to do today. You can come and pick up a little bit of yellow and fill in some spaces. If you even want to fill in an entire space, you may. So that's one way to do this project. Another way would be to do like he did um, where he would talk about balloons. And a lot of times when we look at those, you can see that he has um, kind of like it looks like a space leading up to the balloons, almost like it's a landscape. So I'm going to try and do that right now. Again, taking this and maybe putting some of those grid-like lines that he would put on there. And when I go to add my balloons, I want it to be that I can show the movement of my balloons, but also I want um, to have them look really black. And because of that, I'd like it to be that instead of you actually drawing a black circle, I'd like for you to actually cut out some black paper. Let me um, finish putting these on here. So if you look here, I um, will have a station set up for you, a table that has black paper. And I went ahead and cut out some circles for myself. And now what I'm going to do is take my glue stick and just glue them on. So some of you might be going, I have no idea what I'm making here. And if you are, then you're kind of thinking the way Andrew, and, um, Sandy Calder used to. Because he would just kind of start and create and let the shapes kind of dictate what he was doing and looking for the movement that was in his art. And then from there he would add color. And it was always an exciting thing to see 
what would happen? I want to have um, one more over here. I missed a spot. Beep, beep. And now when you go to color in your spaces in between here, you can either do solid colors or you can have fun and do a few little patterns. Like maybe here I would do stripes or something like that. Always rinsing your brush, even though we're using um, these, they're sometimes called hockey puck paints because they look like a hockey puck. But um, if you want to use, if you even though we're using that kind, I still need for you to um, rinse your brush out so you don't ruin it. So I can't wait to see what you guys do today. Um, I have a feeling that some of you are going to be dying to get your hands on some wire to try and make a mobile the way that Alexander Calder did, especially after doing this project here and kind of planning out uh, your own lines of motion. So have fun.